So at the beginning of every year, uh, as a parent having three kids, you get lots of new presents and toys and crap you have to organize in your house. One, it's very cool to see your kids get those things. Two, it's a nightmare organizing. So one of my favorite things when we get new toys in the house is purging old toys. Let me explain. Good riddance. Screen recording. Okay, how's it going everyone? So this last week, um, there wasn't too much that happened that I wanted to record. I had a lot of family things that wanted to keep private. So this week I wanted to post a vlog a little bit about uh, some of my design process um, with grids and columns. In designing, we do a show called The Undo Show. And uh, last week or two weeks ago, we had uh, just open Q&A and someone asked about uh, the eight point baseline grid. And this is something that is, uh, is very common, uh, even in print design, baseline grids are a core metric. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through um, kind of our Design Inc. Uh, template GUI or graphic user interface. Um, anytime that I work on an app or a product and I've kind of realized the scope and scale of what the UI needs to consider, um, I create kind of a core file that has these core elements to per pixel perfection so that we can hand that off to engineering and they can use that as a base core library for either their SDK or for their CSS. And so I just wanted to walk you through some of my process and how I have approached um, designing UI for Design Inc. Um, as well as some of the methodologies and why I do them. Um, so just to get started, uh, this is not at all my methodology. Um, the eight point grid system and the kind of metrics and, and, and workflow I'm using is very much derivative of material design from Google. Google had you know outlined this and I'll link the description, but they have plenty of documentation and reasons why this works well um, and while it's scalable across multiple screens and multiple densities of, um, of devices. Long story short, it's a great method. Um, it works for Google and so I didn't try and rethink it when we were designing Design Inc. Um, so I've got this camera and then I'm screening, recording my screen so you guys can see. Um, when it comes down to it, uh, this is my sketch file. You can obviously do this in any, in any software. Uh, I like to start off, especially if I'm doing a responsive web project, I'd like to start off with um, kind of a 1024 view, which is for me the minimum baseline for a, a decent desktop view. If you can see here, my column has um, some margin on there so you can show what kind of bleeds outside of the max width of the site. Um, and then I have a 768 view, with a subtle inset margin, which, um, which is representative of a tablet uh, in portrait mode. 360, which is kind of a, a moderate cell phone view. The big thing to know is that in all of these views, you'll see a certain column layout and then a certain gutter. That gutter is 16 dips um, or pixels, depending on your, your context. Um, but I'm using um, the base unit of eight pixels. Um, or eight dips or eight whatever and I'm doubling that for my margins within my columns and then for my desktop view I've got an eight column grid for my uh, tablet view I have an eight column grid and a four column grid uh, for phone um, I can show you a little bit of how I've set up my file and I'll probably share this file and let it be downloadable as far as the initial template it's nothing fancy but I figure I can share it um, if it gets um, you off to a good start. Okay, so you've got review and then Canvas. Uh, you have all these different options of what you want to show in the actual workspace, as well as being able to set your grid and layout settings. So I'm going to hop into grid settings. Here you can see I have a, a grid block size of eight pixels um, with a thick line every six 
blocks. When you get into the columns, that's where it really becomes valuable. So if I go into my um, layout settings um, for this canvas here, it's, I think it's a 1200 width on that desktop uh, canvas. Then I have a 1024 column width, so that's kind of my max width. I have a total of eight columns, a 16 pixel gutter, which means you have a 114 pixel um, column width. So this is all generated through, through the math of sketch. You can also hear the vertical rhythm I'm setting at 48 pixels. Um, this is kind of a nice um, vertical rhythm throughout the web page that I can align things and make sure things are flowing within that eight pixel grid. So I'm gonna keep this all how it is. I just wanted to kind of show you guys how I set up my file um, and I get this very clean and set up before I jump into any design um, when I'm creating these kind of resource files. Okay, so uh, you'll see here in my panel to the left, I have kind of a grid and the overall graphic user interface set up as a page. I have uh, responsive web design components. It's basically showing how any UI group or UI element um, exists on desktop, tablet, and mobile. So instead of drawing all my screens across all of the different applications and, and UIs, I can say this component looks this way across these screens, and so that becomes a reference point um, instead of having to draw every screen within the application. Um, I can get into that a little bit later. I also have layout templates, so for different hero screens or different parts or features of an application, um, there's a certain layout and a certain um, amount of rules that exist within that screen. And so I have these layout templates that kind of show how things should be arranged, what's fixed, what's fluid, what moves, what doesn't. Um, and then lastly, I have an icon page where I have all my icons to export to SVG. Um, it's probably an old process, but it works pretty clean for me. Um, I'm going to jump into the grid UI um, page here. Basically what you'll see is um, I'm outlining for the engineer what my core metrics are. So there's a, you know, an eight point baseline grid, 16 point gutter and spacing, and a 48% um, vertical rhythm. Um, this helps the engineer understand kind of my, my pace and rhythm from a, from a metric standpoint so that those things can be, can be consistent across the pages. I'm throwing out some simple colors and hexes uh, so we don't have to, they don't have to sample and understand all the different colors I'm using in the UI. Um, this is something that I adopted from um, material design, but it's also very useful to define kind of a taxonomy of what you're naming different um, type treatments. Um, so I have header treatments and body treatments here uh, for both light and dark, for different, for title headers, regular headers, sections, wizards, body, subtext, footer, meta, um, body icon lockups. You can really make this whatever you need it to be depending on your application, but it's nice to have a taxonomy with your engineer to be able to discuss, hey, just go use the subtext um, type treatment. And then icon size is another big thing for me. This all falls in with it, that eight, eight uh, pixel or dip uh, baseline metric. So you have 24, 32, 48, 64, 96. And I try and restrict myself to only using those icons within those metrics so that I can maintain that consistent rhythm um, and flow throughout the design. Um, I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into uh, shared styles. So here we have some different drop shadows uh, and shared styles that you'll see, whether they're strokes, um, border radiuses, um, and drop shadows. We have a very similar material design, different levels of depth within our cards that we use. And so I'm kind of just providing some detail and design there. All of these um, project files in Sketch I'm exporting to Zeppelin. Zeppelin provides all this as well um, and allows the engineer to inspect, but I like to just kind of delineate it here in the style guide so they can see it. Uh, I show all the different button styles, uh, show all the different button styles um, with their regular and hover state on black, on dark, and on light. And then I have different card and dialogue styles, so showing how those will exist on dark and on light as well as different avatar lockups. So um, we have lots of avatars for our different users and clients within the app. And so showing the different ways that we lock those up. And I try and keep those pretty consistent and reuse these components so the engineer isn't having to uh, constantly design and code new things. Uh, the last page within this grid GUI document is simply just our fields. So I have um, all the form fields and their normal, complete, active, invalid state um, for regular text fields, passwords, dropdowns, tags, 
in both light and dark. So once again, this is all very basic stuff, but um, once you've fleshed out a UI and understand kind of the overall language, it's nice to have the source file as um, kind of the go-to source of truth. So with the responsive web components, there's a couple things that um, are, are global across a site or application that I think are important to outline how they work and evolve depending on the user state. Um, some good examples of these would be um, a navigation um, and how a navigation or a different um, breadcrumb or tab UI will evolve. Um, different column layouts, if you have a certain, we have these uh, component cards that were um, these tiers, if you will. With those tiers, we show how that will evolve across screens when you can't align horizontally, how those stick vertically and those cards layouts change as well. So see here, there's a three column grid all kind of um, centered. Those go to a stat car with a two column layout and then on mobile, um, a vertical layout. Likewise, we had these portfolio cards that showed kind of your portfolio, some of the pricing and then some descriptions. Those cards evolve and some of those um, elements evolve across screen sizes. And lastly, we have these request cards, which is based on our current model of Design Inc., where you can see a request with a budget um, and a description. And uh, those cards evolve as well across um, different screen sizes. So this is very kind of a small um, part of the style guide, but they're very key components that are the kind of the main surfaces of the app that need to evolve across different sizes. And you can use this in a web and even in a native context, depending on whether you're designing for phone and tablet or a full responsive web page. Once again, all of these are on that same column, so still eight pixel dip and baseline with all of those core metrics informing the type size, the icon size, the spacing, the padding, all of the UI elements within um, the layout. Lastly, um, I have layout templates, which is kind of drawing a key hero screen and how it um, lays out within our grid. So you can see here, this was um, a menu page that we had of a certain design deliverable. So it showed kind of the main item name, the tiers that we offered, and then some marketing copy below. And it shows how those same elements evolve as far as layout um, across phone and tablet. So this is kind of how I tackle multiple screens. I try not to draw, draw every screen, but I try to at least show a reference for each core moment in the UX and how I envision the type size layout typography evolving across those breakpoints or those devices. These sides, I also like dumb back all of the visuals and all of the um, graphics so that it's obvious that it's a template and not a, a specific screen. Um, this helps communicate um, the context of the design and what it's used for. The last thing is uh, all of my icons, of course, like I said, um, designed at a minimum of 24 pixels um, or dips or units, whatever you're using. Uh, the most important part of this is that this is my one-to-one -one ratio um, for stroke width, for spacing, for making icons centered within a square. And this 24 um, source icon will scale up if I do my job right. So at 24, 48, 96, whatever the icon is visualized at within the app, if I get it right at 24, outline it and export it as SVG in the correct way, it will maintain its integrity across that metric grid, regardless of how big it is, the density of the device, um, or how large we scale that SVG. So um, I had them kind of organized by category, so navigational icons, wizard icons, project icons, deliverable icons, tiers. So this is kind of a source for me. I know a lot of people have different icon um, workflows. Um, I prefer Sketch right now. I know that um, Illustrator is doing this now too, but it's very easy to take this icon, um, make it exportable at different resolutions if you're not using SVGs, which is nice as well. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I want to keep this short and sweet, and it's a very design-heavy vlog, obviously. But I wanted to share that with you guys, and hopefully it's useful. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments. Um, please like the video if this is useful, and share if you want to tell your friends. Um, if you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter. I'd love to talk through this more and share some of my process. Um, once again, it's nothing new. I'm kind of stealing what I've learned at Google and implementing it a little bit within our own current workflow. Uh, so I'd love to hear what you guys think.